Now, the Burundian woman whom Defense Minister Nosovio Mapisa Ngakula is accused of smuggling into the country has broken her silence. In an exclusive interview with the SABC, Michelle Wege insists that Mapisa Ngakula's 2013 involvement is getting her out of the DRC and into South Africa was legal and above board. Mapisa Ngakula used an Air Force flight to bring Wege into the country, something she has publicly said she doesn't regret. However, Wege who now lives with the minister, admits that she fraudulently got into the DRC fleeing away from her father in Burundi, whom she accused of abuse. The person who helped her get into the DRC is a South African embassy staff member in Burundi. He has now been fired and fighting his dismissal. As um, she was trying to do all of that, Abdul was her translator. And he came to me after saying, I've been hearing her trying to go to all of these embassies, trying to find a way for you to go out. I believe I have a way, and I want to help you. And I told him, listen, I've already decided that I'm going to have to get an illegal document to travel. I already know this. And I'd rather not have anyone else, even though I'm prepared to get caught, because I know that it's safer for me in a foreign prison than to be with my father. Because I know, besides just the abuse, this was the first time that he had gone further, as in treating me the way he would treat any other business partner, or he's, he's a vicious person in that, you know, in that business and political sense. Um, to me, he's just, he's been my father, yes, with abuse, but he's always been, I've always still felt like I'm his child. It has never been a property or a whatever is going on. But that was the first time where he would even have police men coming after me, goons coming after me, threatening the lives of people to get to me. So yeah, either way, I told Abdul, I don't want you to be in that position because if I get caught, you get caught. And you have a family and so on, so I don't know what will happen. But he looked at me and said, no, you are like my child. If my child would have any issues this deep, I would want someone to help them. You are, you are like my child. There's no way that this is happening and I can just stand by and not do anything. And so he did help me. Um, I crossed through other contacts. That is in a report for whoever needs to see that, whoever has the authority to see that as they do the investigation. I'm not gonna mention their names as I don't think it's the public should know that. But I had, I crossed the border and as I arrived there, he helped me with my new documents. How did you cross the border? Um, in a car hiding, <laughs> I, I was hiding in the car. But I had another ID that I had organized. Um, so yes, so we crossed the border. He said, don't worry, I will handle this. Um, he did somehow get the papers. Um, we got to the airport, and then obviously we, we got caught. Um, and then, yeah, so we told the story. As we were there, we said, okay, this is, this is what's happening, X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm not sure how long it took before we told them, but we waited until it was like an official, official person, because at the same time, where I was coming from was that my dad could have any goons anywhere and it's easier to pay off the lower level it's very very easy to do that i'd rather have an official official so i can say anywhere on the record that i told this person you know x y and z so yeah i guess they didn't believe us they put us in a it's not a prison it's a holding cell, right? holding cell type yes there we go type thing we were there for about a week um abdul was there with me and he was watching over me, basically, and his family came through with food for us and so on and so forth. And um, I think after a week of being there, I got a call that um, mom was flying through, but that she still wasn't sure. It, wasn't, it didn't mean anything that she could help me or not, but she was going to ask them why they were not listening to my story because I was telling them the truth. So she thought, okay, let me tell them again about what's happening. And I want to understand exactly what it is. Why are they not releasing you? And what exactly are you being, like what is going on? Because we were in the cell not knowing anything. It will be one day, okay, we think you're hiding diamonds in your stomach. We hear this information that you are drug, uh, a diamond smuggler. And then the next day you have drugs, um, you're hiding drugs and so on and so forth. And it got so bad to, they cut my, they were going to, they had a schedule to cut my dreads off to find these um, diamonds or drugs that I apparently had in my dreads. Um, so she, they were trying to, she was, I think, trying to find out where these stories are coming from 
and why, how, what could we do to move forward? Then they brought me out of the cell to sit there and talk again. And as we were sitting there talking, it was as if like, oh, oh, that is your name? Oh, your abuse? As if this was a, you know, a new thing that was coming out, but it wasn't. Like I had been saying this story, this is what is happening to me. But again, I don't know, either way. So I was there and eventually they said, okay, well then you can go. And they had told me before that her coming there might not mean that I can get out. And even if I get out, doesn't mean that I'm going anywhere with her. I was thinking that, okay, if I can get out now, where to move from here? My dad probably has heard now that I'm in Congo, now I have to properly go underground and hide again. It was, that's where I was um, going. But either way, so I got out and they said that I could go with them. And from my, what I found out later, um, she did get permission to do that. So yeah, got out and they brought me here after she did what she was supposed to do because she was there on her own mission um, for work. So yeah.